One. I thought all that was supposed to be quiet. What? Bless you. <laughs> uh, Bless you. Thank you. Don't sit on my book. I'm not sitting on book. You are. Oh my god. <laughs> channel it's Shauna and this is Natasha if you remember if you've seen our previous video of our tipsy review of the first book in the house of night series marked right marked yeah <laughs> we've had a few already tonight we're drinking cider instead of wine it was a cider can night yeah so we're gonna dive right into the second book in this series betrayed oh yeah yeah because people get betrayed <laughs> Are you good? Mm -hmm. Do I need to come give you the highlight maneuver? We had some interruptions going on if you couldn't tell. <laughs> Anyways, yes, just like in the first book, someone gets marked. In the second book, someone gets betrayed. I wonder who it is. <laughs> But we know because we read the book and hopefully you read the book too before watching this video because we are going to be going into some details and there may be some spoilers so strap in to another exciting video of tipsy reviews. Cheers. <laughs> All right. So you want to give the brief synopsis? Yes. So Zoe Redbird is the main character. She's still at the House of Night. She's now taken over the Dark Daughters and she's preparing for her first ritual because Aphrodite, yes, as we've established, <laughs> Aphrodite is her name, not Aphrodite. Uh, yeah, I read this in high school. I don't know why. I just always assumed that was her name. Anyways. Continue. Um, yeah, Aphrodite got removed from Dark Daughters. Now Zoe is the leader, so she was preparing for that. People, some high school boys go missing from the football team from her old high school. And she's trying to figure out what's going on with that. Vampires are being framed for the murders, essentially. Yeah, because they're drained of blood, right, when they're killed. Right, and I think they have a lot of lacerations and blood loss. Yeah. So... She assumes someone's making it look like vampires did it. And her ex-boyfriend, not boyfriend, kind of boyfriend, he is also very involved. He also goes missing at some point and she well, figure out some stuff about Nefred and How do you some say secrets. this? Nefred? Is that not how you say it? How do I say Nefred? I guess mine's a very southern way of saying it. <laughs> what do you say? I don't know, actually. Like I I've just always said it as Nefred. Oh. In my head? I guess, yeah, I say Neferit, I guess, when I like say it in my head. How did you say it before or just now though? Neferit? Neferit. Neferit. I just say Neferit. It's like fast. <laughs> <laughs> Fed up version. <laughs> my tipsy brain is like not computing, right? Okay. Anyways, yeah, that's a good summary. Yes. Of basically what happens in the second book. Oh my god. So, what are your initial thoughts? Let's start with that. Um, about everything that happens. I mean, it's interesting. It made me want to read the next one. Okay. The ending was like kind of cliffhanger-esque. Not quite cliffhanger, but enough that you wanted to read the next one. Still not a super fan of Zoe. Just don't like her that much. I mean, I gotta be honest. Listen, Zoe a hoe. Yeah, just still don't really like her. But, find out that her friends all have affinities. Yes. For all the elements. Yeah. So Zoe has an affinity for all five elements, which are earth, fire, fire water, water, air, and spirit. Yeah, you know it better than I do. So we know Zoe, she, we knew that in the first book. And then coming into the second book, all of her friends, Damien, Shawnee, Aaron, Aaron, and Stevie Ray, Ray all have an affinity each for a specific element and then she like Zoe still represents spirit. spirit yeah for herself so there's five of them yes I don't know I yeah I think it's <laughs> it's interesting because it's like we were talking about this earlier of just like this is a romance book <laughs> with a dash of 
other stuff. <laughs> yeah, just like suspense. I don't even want to call it like action. Yeah, I guess it's more suspense because the second book does end somewhat on a cliffhanger of like you kind of want to see what happens next. Not necessarily like, oh my god, I need to know what happens. It's more of just like what's going to happen next. <laughs> It's the same thing. I don't but it's know. just not like, <laughs> whereas like something would leave you with like questions and that would be the last page. Yeah. They don't do that in this book. They like leave you with that, but then they continue on and there's more pages. There's more pages after the cliffhanger that like supposed to settle, that settle the book. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Just like she goes home. And... Yeah. This book, I, we don't have that much to say about it just because it feels like, I think we were saying this in the last video too, that. It feels like such, it, this whole thing is like a whole story and we're just getting a tiny piece of the puzzle. Whereas it's not like each indiv individual book is its own. Right. Like, it's just like a continuation on, but it's like a tiny yeah. piece. I feel like the synopsis I gave in the beginning was like a very brief moment in time, but it was the whole book. So <laughs> yeah, because we're, well, I'm currently right now in this moment in time reading the third book, you finished the third and fourth. Right. And so like, even where you're at, she's still in her first year <laughs> yeah. of vampire school. So this is just like the next couple weeks. Like there's not a lot of time lapse between the books as far as I can tell. Yeah. It's just, it goes from one right into the next. And yeah. so like, there's no overarching theme within each book. It's not like, I mean, I guess there is, but nothing that's like super dramatic. It's yeah. just like another tiny piece to the overall puzzle of all 12 books. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't know. How do you feel about <laughs> the representation in this book? <laughs> the same as I did in the first book. Not really <laughs> any. And also the book is just as problematic as the first book. Yeah. But as far as language is concerned and how they describe <sighs> people and being now on the having finished the fourth book I just say it only continues which I was kind of hoping that it would get better because they're coming out in later years you would think that they would improve know. somewhat yeah which I feel I like there's less language there is there is less of it right but it but still, still doesn't <laughs> they shouldn't have it at all exactly <laughs> but like yeah so yeah I would say at the fourth book it's gotten better like you don't see it as much as you did in the first book mm -hmm. um but every time I see it, I just cringe and I'm like, why? They just could have just left the whole sentence out. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of things like they, they, they don't, <laughs> they don't mean, it's not necessary. But yeah, like I said earlier, it feels much more like a weird type of romance scenario. I don't know. Yeah. It's, well, right now Zoe has two boyfriends if we're talking about betrayed. She's got her boyfriend <laughs> Eric and her ex-boyfriend who's kind of still her boyfriend. But if you remember from the last video, Natasha remembered there was something to do with the teacher and that is introduced into the second book. Yes. And again, hopefully you've read it by now before watching this video if you are so inclined <laughs> to read the series. If you don't care about spoilers, but yeah, just Lauren Blake, the professor, has been introduced, and apparently he's a hottie as well. They have some sort of vibe going on between them, but nothing's really developed in the second book. No, he just touches her tattoos, like, in a very intimate way. Yeah, like, on, you know, he she shows him her, like, back tattoos, which is a very, like... And like sensual scene, dips her, but nothing happens. Dips her spaghetti strap down. Yeah, <laughs> and he recites poetry in the to moonlight. Her. Yeah, <laughs> I can't with these books. <laughs> Meanwhile, she's officially dating Eric. She's has imprinted, imprinted with Heath, so they have a connection. And yeah, I mean, she needs to get together. I love the fact that like. She considers all these people her boyfriend. <laughs> Even though she's never once said, like, she's cheating. She's never once been like, oh, yeah, we had the conversation. Or, like, they actually have a dialogue conversation back and forth of, like, yeah, like, so what are we doing? Like, are we actually officially dating? Or, like, you know, do we have titles? No, it's just like, oh, we kissed. Oh, my God, he's my boyfriend. I have another boyfriend. <laughs> That's my thought process. It's like... 
No. It doesn't, it doesn't work. And like, oh my god, I can't, I can't. Yeah, again, we don't really have much to talk about in this one just because not a whole, whole lot happens. I mean, you find out a little bit more about Neferit. <laughs> um, yes. Neferit is proving to be um, problematic. suspicious. <laughs> so, essentially, towards the end of the book, the title Betrayed is tied to Neferit. She is seen with a dead, undead fledgling who is still alive, but not quite alive as they were before. Yeah. They have red eyes and have red tattoos. Yeah, she's kept them secret yeah. this whole time. She tells people, you know, they're dying, they're denying the change in them, and then she sweeps them out and takes them away after they've died. Uh, but then they turn into this other sort of creature that's more of a stereotypical vampire that they'll like burn up in the sunlight. They have to have blood like all the time or else they'll go crazy. They're losing their humanity. Yeah. So in this book, she's seen three undead yeah, yeah. fledglings. Two were like her classmates or people that she's like at least familiar with. And then in this one... We do find out, huge spoiler, that Stevie Ray dies, which is, she was my favorite character in the first one. So right? I, okay, kill my favorite character and you want me to keep reading. Like, <laughs> come on. <laughs> the only saving grace is that we do, she does spot Stevie Ray undead. As she's saving Heath. And you find out those people who were killing the humans and the football players were the undead, dead vampires. Yes. Oh. That made me want to keep reading because I really like Stevie Ray and I wanted to know what happened with her. Yeah. Um, but it was devastating reading the chapter where she died. Oh my god. Because she actually died after the first ritual. They were all yeah. going to put their hands, um, all the Dark Daughters were going to like... Which so never it stole the scene, remember? Oh yeah, so Zoe had all these ideas about how she wanted to change the Dark Daughters to make them more like respectable and... Could, yeah. you know, uh, connect more with the community and that kind of thing. And she just, Neferit came in and stole all of her ideas and just claimed them as her own. And what then bitch. shortly after, <laughs> TV Ray died. And that was just heartbreaking. So, of course, she then turned, like, Zoe starts to turn to Aphrodite for help. And, like, honestly, though, like, I think... Even though, like, Stevie Ray is lo losing her humanity, I still love her. Mm -hmm. But, like... She's like, we don't know what's kind of happening with her in this second book. We just know that she's, like, turned into this thing, and we don't really know what she is. Yeah. Even though, like, like putting that aside, like, I, I love Zoe's grandma. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's, she's the only great. person that I'm like, I love her without any qualms whatsoever. <laughs> because, like, I think everyone else has, I don't know, they try to put this, like, pretty bow tie on it of like everybody has their partner kind of thing like the twins they try to have them be with like Eric's friends and then Damien meets Jack right it is like with him and it just I'm like I'm over it I'm yeah. like we don't have to ha like a happy ending doesn't mean you get into a relationship with somebody it doesn't I mean I've read plenty of books where like it does not have a pretty bow tie ending and it was a five star book yeah. Like, it was fantastic. Yeah. I personally don't like how they wrap it up at the end. I prefer it to be a little messy. Yeah. But, like, something dramatic will happen. Like, devastating, life-changing. Yeah. And then it's just, like, she's just chilling back in her dorm room. <laughs> and, you know, I'm like, it didn't, I didn't need With this. her now, like, two boyfriends. I didn't need this scene. <laughs> I didn't need it. God, she makes me so mad. Yeah. All the characters, though. The, like we said, the only people that I necess like I really like Stevie Ray mm -hmm. and Zoe's grandma, yeah. Grandma Redford, yeah, love her, love Neferit to begin with, but that obviously now we're not supposed to love her because she has something going on. We don't know why. Yeah. We just know that she's like in charge of these creatures. <laughs> but like Zoe is the one we hate the most, and she is the main character. Like yeah. that's not supposed to happen. I mean, maybe it's because we were. It's from her perspective, and she just so shallow sometimes yeah like, i don't know just everything she does doesn't seem like super genuine when she's like thinking about it in her own head and so then it doesn't really make you want to root for her but no. i don't really want to root for anybody in this not really i just want to know i'm not necessarily reading yeah. anybody, I just want to know. we're not reading for the characters we're reading more for the story yeah i really like the affinity 
aspect of it and that they all have an affinity mm -hmm. for these different elements. So I did really like that. Uh, just for the different elements. I think that part is really, really interesting and really mm -hmm. cool. And I do love... Okay, so no, I will say Nyx is a favorite. I guess you could consider her a character. Yeah, the goddess. Yeah. She is cool. I just find it they rely too much, like these authors going a little bit deeper into like writing. But I feel like they rely way too much on using Nyx as an excuse for certain things. They do rely on it like, just like, oh, Nyx told me to do this, or Nyx told me to do that, and like, yeah. I'm following the goddess's order. When it's like, <laughs> they're like paralleling, is that a word? They're, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, they're like, <laughs> creating some sort of comparison between like, God and the goddess, like how you rely on that for a lot of things like I guess I feel like because there's also the people of faith I think or yeah, whatever yeah, they're yeah, called yeah. and that's like Zoe's stepdad is a part of and and her mom and her mom and you know they rely heavily on like their faith and how this is wrong and this is right and so I feel like you know God says this is bad thing I know but it doesn't time. it doesn't feel like it's meant to be any sort of in a sarcastic or let me show you the, the wrong ways or it it just feels like oh you should love this religion kind of thing like mm -hmm. this nyx and this goddess and everything like that which i do but at the same time it feels a little forced mm -hmm. and it feels a little again like they rely too easily on saying like oh well i'm here or oh we should cast out aphrodite and like disown her essentially because Nyx has disowned her and taken away her ability. Yeah, I could see that. Where it's like, they rely a little too much on that. And like, I get using that, but they're not really even using it in a way like you were saying as far as like to parallel that. Yeah. To show you how ridiculous it is. It's not laughing at itself. It's literally trying to be serious. Yeah, yeah. And it shouldn't be. It should laugh at itself. Yeah, that makes sense. That's true. Yeah. I feel like... That's just what I get from it, but that's not really what the book does in its own. Yeah. Yeah. So we asked this question in the last video, and I feel like we should ask it for every book now. Okay. This is interesting. So if you could read this book again through another character's perspective, whose would it be and why? You can still choose the same person you chose last time. <laughs> if you want to. Yeah. Actually, I would want to read it from Aphrodite's perspective this time because she actually is cast out and she still kind of helps Zoe towards the end with mm -hmm. her visions and so I'm curious so like all this stuff that's going on what has been happening with her because we don't really see her too much in the book until like yeah, that's she's true. really needed I guess that's to true. move the story along so I would be curious that is an interesting perspective you know what I feel like I want to choose someone really ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, I wanted to say Nefret at first to like, just so we can know no what's her secrets <laughs> <laughs> and what the hell is going on. And also when she takes away Zoe's memory and oh, then yes. like is shocked that she miraculously remembered everything. Yeah. But I kind of want to feel, I feel like I want to say somebody really ridiculous. <laughs> I kind of want to say Jack. Because <laughs> he's, like, he's so pure and innocent. Yeah. And he's new. And so it's like, so the Jack is, if you, again, if you haven't read it, the new kid who rooms with Eric, Zoe's boy, well, one of Zoe's boyfriends. <laughs> and she's, he's kind of dating or starts to date Damien. Yeah. So Jack is this really cute, like, little innocent creature and has apparently an affinity with electronics. I don't know. Just, yeah. So he's like a part of the group, but not. Fully, like he's just, yeah. he's on a, by default because he's kind of seeing Damien, he's a part of the group, and yeah. he helps with all their audio stuff for all the rituals. <laughs> he's just so far in the background that I'm yeah. like, I would love to see everything through his perspective because he's new. He comes <laughs> into this school like so overwhelmed being marked and like now rooming with like one of the most popular kids at the yeah. school and also being gay, and I'm like, I just kind of want to see what his experience is like. Yeah, <laughs> true, true, true. And just see like what he thinks of <laughs> everything. Like that. I know. <laughs> the way he thinks about everything that's going on and like walking into this new world, but also then meeting like one of the most powerful fledglings like of all time on top of everything and then like being accepted into her group. It's like, I don't know. I feel like he would have an interesting perspective. Yeah. 
they don't really talk about his backstory either. So it'd be yeah, nice yeah. to know like what his family was like. Yeah. But I feel like if we saw this through Nefret's perspective, it would be a very completely different story. Oh yeah. This would be like a story about some like ungrateful children who like <laughs> <laughs> disobey at every turn. Yeah. The only the only intriguing thing about Nefret's story for me would be. I would know what she's up to before. It would be. Says. But you know what else, what else I really want to know, though? Is, like, if she is so bad as she's, like, meant to be kind of... It's hinted at so far mm -hmm. in the second book. And it's, like, she's portrayed as, like, supposed to be this really bad person or, like, this evil character. And she's the one, like, we're up against. She's, like, the antagonist in the story. Mm -hmm. And, like, Nyx, the goddess, is, like, helping Zoe in all of this. Yeah. How did Nefret get to become a high priestess mm. if she falls so out of favor with Nyx? They will explain it later. Oh, okay. okay. Never mind. Yes. <laughs> I, I was like, that would have been such a cool, like, <laughs> spinoff, though, of, like, seeing that. I don't know. I feel like, and, and Tony and I have, like, had many discussions about this, but just in general, like, with movies, TV shows, books, everything, I feel like our generation or, like, coming into, like, this this century or whatever, I feel like we're so obsessed with the villain story mm -hmm. because we're getting to this point more where, like, we want to know... Because we know it's not as simple as black and white. It's not just, right. like, evil versus good. Yeah. It's like, these people are people. Like, not everyone is born... Right, evil. villains aren't just villains. Yeah. Yeah, something like, happened, like, we want to know what That changed their mindset. Yeah. And so, like, I feel like our generation especially is more obsessed with, like that type of story and like even rooting for the villain in like these major popular films yeah. or TV shows that like n now rereading this I'm like I want to know Nefret's story like maybe she's not as bad as they think she is <laughs> I don't know <laughs> anyways I think we've gone really off track <laughs> so that's pretty much it for this video yeah because we don't really have much else to say at least about this book I think in the next couple of weeks have a lot to say, I'm sure. But thanks for watching, guys. Give this video a thumbs up. <laughs> if you liked it. Thank you, Natasha. <laughs> you know all of it. You've seen my videos. <laughs> Please ignore the crazy people in the background. Please, yes, like Natasha said, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Hit that bell icon if you want to get a notification anytime that I create a video. And please subscribe if you haven't already, if you're new here. Please stay tuned for the next video. We will be posting that one probably fairly soon. I'm almost done with the third book, so be on the lookout for it. Thanks so much, guys, and we'll see you in the next video. Okay, we're done. The behind the scenes stuff. Oh my god. <laughs> this dark, uh, our light. <laughs> Her food's there. Mm -hmm. I got some right. What is the cards? And they're like, he doesn't live here. I'm like, well, every time I go, he's here. So. <laughs>